Hey, good morning, church family. Brother Kyle here. I'm glad that you've come out this morning to worship with us. Um, I know that uh, once again, it is definitely uh, different uh, standing here before you with uh, no one else here, but uh, I'm glad that you have uh, tuned in and joined us uh, this morning uh, for worship, uh, expecting and believing great and mighty things to, to take place today. And I do just want to want to cover just a couple of things before uh, we dive in this morning. Hopefully uh, you can pay close attention to just a few announcements. Um, we'll be having those on the screen. Also have those in uh, our, our bulletin. So if you're wanting one of those, we'll, we'll be glad to uh, get one to you or you're more than welcome uh, to come up. Uh, we're going to be here today till one o'clock after the service. So. Uh, you can come by for that. But I, I want to start out with just some prayer requests. Continue to pray for Buck and Sheila Hergen, uh, knowing that uh, he was having surgery this morning, that God is in complete control. And I was very fortunate enough to be able to talk and pray with him uh, this morning before uh, that, that happened. And uh, it's just awesome to see uh, his faith playing out. And I just pray uh, as well for Sheila, uh, knowing that uh, she's separated from him right now during this process, but uh, that God's giving her uh, peace and comfort with that as well. Also, uh, Cassandra Reed uh, did reach out to us this morning and asking for specific prayers for her uncle, Danny Clarkson, who had some uh, stents put in. I know that he's uh, at home and, and he's doing well, but just continue to pray. And, and she also threw in there that her and the baby both are doing well. So... Uh, also, don't forget about the, the Hearst family. I know that Miss Norma had reached out and asked for specific prayers as her uh, granddaughter is going to be having a new baby uh, coming up Monday. But uh, with everything going on with this COVID-19, uh, I know that dad won't be able to be there in the delivery room and uh, uh, family won't be able to come during this time. But uh, just, just definitely continue to lift up that situation. I know there's tons of prayer requests out there. Um, I just want to make sure that I remind you guys to please share those with us, whether it's uh, with myself or uh, someone else on staff or through your deacon or Sunday school teacher. But make sure that we get those so that we can be praying uh, specifically for each and every one of those needs. Also, I wanted to make sure uh, that you're able to continue to uh, connect with us. Right. Um, we're going to be putting uh, this uh, message online, uploading it to our website, right, uh, after this is over. So you'll be able to see it there also, right, making sure that you continue to follow us on Facebook and then downloading uh, our church app uh, as well. That way you'll be able to stay connected uh, the best way that we possibly can. And I, and I want to throw our church one call out there as well. Uh, I, I do encourage you, uh, if you've not signed up for that and you want to receive that, then please let me know. We still have slots available uh, with that as well. And then also, right, just continue to uh, being good stewards of everything that God is giving us by uh, just sharing uh, with us with uh, your gifts, tithes, and offering, um, knowing that uh, during this tough time, I know that... Uh, Lots of people are concerned about lots of things, and we want you to continue to be obedient to the Lord. Uh, here is our church mailing address, right? 2200 Old Parable Loop Road, and that's Springfield. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll continue to make sure that that uh, goes exactly where it needs to be as we continue to operate and do everything uh, that God is calling us to do. And then also as well, right, uh, continuing to stay connected with us, whether it's with our children's group, right? And you can email uh, Kimberly at kids at bbcspringfield.com or with our youth, you can email Bobby, Joe, and Amanda, right? Youth at bbcspringfield.com or you can uh, email me as well, pastor at bbcspringfield.com and we'll, we'll We'll, we'll try to help out in any way uh, that we possibly can. I do appreciate uh, everything that's going on. I know that uh, through this wonderful technology, there's lots of lots of things that are taking place. Lots of people really getting out of their comfort zone. My, myself, for one, right, and doing uh, this social media. Uh, but uh, man, it's 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 great to be able to see that uh, we're still able to minister uh, with everybody practicing this social distancing. And um, I, I, I just am very thankful that we're we're able to do so. Uh, but uh, just can't stress enough, right? If 
if you need something, make sure you please let us know, and we'll, we'll be glad to help in any way that we can. As I said earlier today, we're going to be here, right, uh, all the way up until 1 o'clock today. Uh, we'll be here, and if you'll just pull through, and if you want to drop off a tithe or offering, if you want a bulletin or first something else that maybe uh, that you're missing that we're able to, to help with, hey, we'd love to we'd love to pray with you, right, from a distance uh, and, still, and still practicing that. But uh, just wanting you to know that uh, you're definitely missed as well as uh, just longing for the time that we get back together again, right? Just coming under uh, this roof to be able to worship the Lord together. So I, I want to I wanna just start by just taking just a, a, a few moments, right, as we, we pray before we, before we dive in here. Lord, we do just come to you this morning and just thanking you for this opportunity and this time and uh, just thanking you for so much and, and just this opportunity really to be able to come out and worship you in this way. And just praying for each and every person as they're either watching, um, whether they're at home or wherever they may be. Uh, Lord, just praying, letting them know that uh, your spirit is what's connecting us right now. And I, I just uh, I thank you for how, how wonderful that it is. And I, and I do pray, as we've mentioned, specific prayer requests, knowing that there's lots more out there, lots of things um, going on, things behind the scene, uh, lots of things that are just um, uh, not even being spoken about, Lord. And I, and I do pray. I pray for all kinds of needs, all kinds of hurts. Uh, all kinds of anxiety and worry and panic, especially with everything that is going on. And, uh, and I just pray, I pray that you would just give peace and comfort that only you can. And, and I do, I just pray for our time together this morning, Lord, that, uh, that we would just learn something about you, something that we could apply to our lives, something that we could walk away from this morning, uh, making us uh, more of what you want us to be more of you lord so i i just pray right here in this moment uh that you would just uh you would just take the very words are going to be coming across my lips and that you would you would do with them what you want lord that you would minister to each and every person uh that, that's hearing it so i just pray hide me behind the cross lord and i, and I want to do exactly of what you want me to do this morning in jesus name amen anthony that's got just a little bit of ringing in there i don't know if you heard that Praise the Lord. I know this morning we're going to be looking at a passage, and I, and I assure you I've, I've went back and forth countless times on uh, exactly of what route we should be going, and I know that there's all kinds of pastors that are going to be speaking on fear and on anxiety and on worry, especially in the midst of this COVID-19, and I say praise the Lord, right? I want you to uh, listen to those encouraging messages as well, but I could not get away from from uh, our reading this morning. I could not get away from, from Leviticus. And I know, right, before you check out already this morning, um, I, I believe there's something worth, worth grabbing a hold of that we've taken part in this week through our Bible reading plan. And if you're, you're not participating in that, then I want to encourage you to, to, to come alongside us, right? You don't have to try to make up anything. You can just follow suit. You can just jump in right of where we're at. And you can start reading God's word with this very simple one to two chapters a day as we read uh, through the Bible, uh, start to finish chronologically. And of course, we're not going to be reading every chapter of every book, but we're going to be gospel, gospel centered theme uh, reading each and every day. So if you want a copy of that, hey, make sure you reach out. We'd be we'd love to give you a copy of that and you can follow right along with us. But this morning, I, I really want to be looking at a Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 16, right? So if you want to go ahead and begin turning your Bibles, that's where we're going to be uh, for the entire morning. And I want to go ahead and tell you, I, I want to read this entire chapter. And I know, I know that's a lot of reading and I know that's a lot for us to take in, but I, I, I don't believe that we can grasp everything if we were to leave out something at the beginning or something at the end, or maybe even something in the middle. I think that we need to take all 34 verses and just grasp exactly of what's going on right here. 
as 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 the law is being uh, being laid out to God's people because of problems that's going on in and through them and I and I believe that this fits right here for for 2020 and I I want to talk much more about that but I, I want you to hear as God unfolds the law as he as he spells that out so follow along with me this morning starting in verse 1 of chapter 16 it says the Lord spoke to Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron. And when they drew near before the Lord and died, and the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron your brother not to come at any time into the holy place inside the veil, before the mercy seat that is on the ark, so that he may not die. For I will appear in the cloud over the mercy seat. But in this way Aaron shall come into the holy place. With a bull from the herd for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering, he shall put on the holy linen coat, and he shall have the linen undergarment on his body, and he shall tie the linen sash around his waist, and wear the linen turban. These are the holy garments. He shall bathe his body in water and then put them on. He shall take from the congregation of the people of Israel two male goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. And Aaron shall offer the bull as a sin offering for himself and shall make atonement for himself and for his house. Then he shall take the two goats and set them before the Lord at the entrance of the tent of meeting. And Aaron shall cast lots over the two goats, one for the Lord and the other for Azel. And Aaron shall present the goat on which the lot fell for the Lord and use it for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell for Azel shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement over it, that it may be sent away into the wilderness. Aaron shall present the bull as a sin offering for himself. He shall make atonement for himself and for the, his house. He shall kill the bull as a sin offering for himself. He shall take a censer full of coals of fire from the altar before the Lord. Two handfuls of sweet incense, beaten small, and he shall bring it inside the veil, and put the incense on the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat, that it is over the testimony, so that he does not die. He shall take some of the blood of the bull and sprinkle it with a finger on the front of the mercy seat on the east side. And in front of the mercy seat, he shall sprinkle some of the blood with his finger seven times. Then he shall kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring its blood inside the veil and do with its blood as he did with the blood of the bull, sprinkling it over the mercy seat and in front of the mercy seat. Thus he shall make atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the people of Israel and because of their transgressions, all of their sins. He shall do for the tent of meeting which dwells with him in the midst of their uncleanness. No one may be in the tent of meeting from the time he enters to make atonement in the holy place until he comes out and has made atonement for himself and for his house and for all the assembly of Israel. Then he shall go out to the altar that is before the Lord and make atonement for it and shall take some of the blood of the bull and some of the blood of the goat and put it on the horns of the altar all around. He shall sprinkle some of the blood on it with his finger seven times and cleanse it and consecrate it from the uncleanliness of the people of Israel. And when he has made the end of atoning for the holy place, the tent of meeting and the altar, he shall present the live goat. And Aaron shall lay both of his heads on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the iniquities of Israel and their transgression, all of their sins. And he shall put on them, um, on them the head of the goat and send it away into the wilderness by the hand of a man who is in readiness. The goat shall bear all their iniquities on itself to a remote area. He shall let the goat go free in the wilderness. Then Aaron shall come into the tent of meeting and shall take off the linen garments that he put on when he went into the holy place. He shall leave them there. He shall bathe his body in water in a holy place and put on his garments and come out and offer his burnt offering, the burnt offering of the people, and make atonement for himself and for the people. And the fact of the sin offering he shall burn on the altar. And he who lets the goat go to Azel shall wash his clothes and bathe his body in water, and afterwards he may come into the camp. And the bull for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering whose, bought, whose blood was bought and to make atonement in the holy place shall be carried outside the camp. 
their skin and their flesh and their dung shall be burned up with fire. And he who burns them shall wash his clothes and bathe his body in water. And afterwards he may come into the camp. And it shall be a statue to you forever that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict yourselves and you shall do no work, either native or the stranger who sojourns among you. For on this day shall atonement be made for you to cleanse you. You shall be clean before the Lord all your sins. It is, it is a Sabbath of solemn rest to you. And you shall afflict yourselves. It is a statue forever. And the priest who is anointed and consecrated as priest in his father's place shall make atonement wearing the holy linen garments. He shall make atonement for the holy sanctuary. He shall make atonement for the tent of meeting and for the altar. He shall make atonement for the priest and for all the people of the assembly. And this shall be a statue forever for you. That atonement may be made for the people of Israel once in the year because of their sins and Aaron did as the Lord commanded Moses man I just I just think about those words and right I I know there's so much that 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 we've just heard right there there's so much so much statue so much command so much specific things that 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 we have been instructed to do here in the Old Testament so much that, that God has just told Moses that he's just given him for his people. And, and God is, he's, he's offering something, right? He's offering something for, for all of mankind, right? As we, we see it unfolding right before our very eyes. We're, we're seeing a, a, a great piece of scripture that I know that was written long ago, but wow, what it, what it looks like in 2020 as, as God is offering, right? So we, as we even thinking that we could, we could even be saying, what is God offering to us? What's God offering to me right now? 2020, what, what's he offering in this moment? And Hey, I'm glad that you're wanting to know that question. Because right off the bat, we're, we're getting to see the, the goodness, the grace, the love of, of, of God. We're, we're seeing right off the bat that, that God offers us forgiveness for sin. Right off the bat, we're, we're seeing this very thing play out that God has given Aaron instructions to make things right because of all of the sin that was playing on and playing out in this moment. And he's using a word atonement here, right? A word that maybe we, we, we don't hear outside of the church, right? But it's a word that is coming out right here in Leviticus chapter 16 about 15 different times. These were rituals, you see, that, that, that would be made uh, to, to have atonement not only for himself and for his family, for the holy place, for the altar, for the tent of meeting as a whole, and even for the people. It was a way for them to be made right, atonement, forgiveness. Why, why in the world would, would he be using that sort of word? Why would it be so important? What is so great about atonement? I don't know if you realize it or not, but I, I sin, you sin, we sin. Therefore, atonement is so necessary. It's, an, it's important for us in order for us to be in God's presence. You see, we, we, can't even, we can't even come even close to being in God's presence with, with this very sin that's in our life. Atonement is, is, is doing what God says is necessary to be reconciled back to Him. It's the, it's the very thing that has to take place. And you see during this, this period, during the Old Testament, God said the only way for things to be made right by your sin, the way that you're living, the way that you're acting out, you have to do sacrifices. You have to do all of these ceremonies. It's the only way things can be made right. We right now, we, we have to understand how important of us knowing of what took place back then and, and seeing how that plays out in our life right here, 2020. We have to understand of, of, of what took place all of those years. Atonement for, for sin. So important because God is, He's just, He's holy. 
He's, he's just. He's holy, right? He has to punish sin. He cannot just let it go free. And I know even as I say that right, sometimes that gives us a skewed vision or a skewed thought of maybe even how that we look or how that we see or, or, or what we even think about God. But, but just think about it right now, just for a moment. If, if we in, in our own counties, right, whether it's Washington or Marion or Taylor or whatever county you may be living in, if, if, if someone was to break the law, right, and you can pick whatever law that they break and you can, you can determine how bad that that law is if it's broken. And if they were to go into our court system and they were to be, uh, be put on trial and that if uh, the judge overseeing it just says, guess what? There's no, there's no penalty for your crime. Just go away. We would be in an outrage. We would, we would, we would want that judge to lose his bench, right? To lose his title, to, 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 to lose what authority that's been given to him because we expect that judge to uphold the law. We expect him to, 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 to prove this man guilty who has committed this crime. And I just, I just think about this just for a moment, right? We're, 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 we're so easy. We're sort of quick to say that we want justice, right? We, we want it. We've got to have it. Just, just get a hold of it, right? That God, God must let guilty people go free. And I know, right, even, even as you hear that, even as it goes inside of your ears and into your brain, you start processing, God must let guilty people go free because if He doesn't, then sinners like you and me will never be set free. It's the only way that we can be saved if, if God pardons us. God is so good. He's, he's so loving. He's merciful because He doesn't want us to perish for our sins. That he, he doesn't want us to be separated from Him. And I hope that you, I hope that you heard that right because it's, it's a verse that lots of us grew up hearing as children. Maybe even the, the first one that we memorized as kids, right? For, for God so loved the world that what? That He gave His one and only Son and that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have what? Everlasting or eternal life. That is the good news. It's the only way. It's the only way that we can spend an eternity with the very one that created us. So how can God is as good as he possibly can be in us as, as filthy and, and, and nasty as we possibly can be, be reconciled with mercy of God? Sacrifice. It's the only way. It's exactly of what we've just read about here in Leviticus chapter 16. Sacrifice is God's answer to the greatest problem known to man. We're here and then sin cuts us here, right? And then God is there. God took out His wrath and His justice on the death of the sacrifice. It's, it's what you have to understand. It's what you have to see that, that God allowed uh, such a great thing, right? He allowed it to express his, his mercy to the sinner by allowing the sacrifice to save, right? To be the ultimate substitute for the sinner. Did, did you see that the guy could still play out his wrath, his, his, his justice, but he would do it on the sacrifice instead of on the actual sinner? I know, I know that we can't even begin to process that, right? The sacrifice is the one that had to die, not the sinner. Do you see that something was presented on someone else's behalf to take the price of the penalty? God applied the penalty for that sin, but it was applied to the sacrifice. It was applied to the sacrifice and not the sinner. You see so long ago in this book, right, in, in Leviticus, as God is talking to Moses to tell Aaron, he's, he's setting up a system for the greatest sacrificial atonement. And I know, right, I know that seems bigger than, than, than what it should be, right? This system was preparing the world. It was preparing you and me, people all across the globe right now to understand the ultimate sacrifice was coming. 
Jesus, when, when he died, when he died on that cross for your sins, for our sins, for my sins, he proved the, the final, right? He, he, he gave us the final, the perfect, the once and for all sacrificial atonement for sin. The greatest news that ever could be heard. This morning you should be praising God right here in this moment. That He offers atonement, right? Forgiveness, reconciliation for your sin, for my sin. Jesus is that. But it doesn't just simply stop with, with that great bit of news, right? Because God offers this removal of sin. Not only, not only does He offer that forgiveness of sin, He's going to offer you a, a removal of that sin. On this day of atonement, on this day of atonement, right, the high priest, he, he offered a, a bull and a ram as sacrifice, uh, sacrifices for sin. And then he also burned some incense for, uh, 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 on the altar as well. He, uh, lastly, he offered up two different goats and he offered them up as, as a sacrifice. One was killed. And the other remained alive. And I know, right? I know even as I say that, right? Just, just stay with me, church. Just hold tight. The one kept alive really is the one that we want to focus on this morning. If we were to kind of study that out or maybe even translate that a little bit more even into the English, right? We would, we would see from the original word that it's translated into the word scapegoat. Just, just think about that word for a moment. Think about it, what it means inside of your mind. The priest would lay his actual hands on this goat's head. And then he would confess over top of it all of the sins. All of the sins of all of the people. Not just some, right? He would confess the sins of the people. And then he would send that goat out into the wilderness. For it to go its own way. For it to go off. The goat of removal, right? The, the, the goat departs with sin. The goat would actually leave outside of the camp. He actually removed what sin was in the camp and he took it outside of the camp. The high priest would put the sins. He, he would... He would deposit the sins of the people into the goat, if you will. And I know, right, I know we can't fathom that because we're, we're not living in that time and we, we can't even begin to understand that process. The goat would bear the sins of all people. He was the escape goat. Do you see the, the beautiful picture that is being painted, Right? The, the beautiful imagery that God is, is laying out before us, God offers this removal of sin. And it's something that, that I want you to grab a hold of this morning. It's something that I want you to hear out. I, I think about a, a time and a place in my life in 2003. One that, that most, uh, a lot of people that know me have heard. It's the night that I, that I placed my faith and my trust in Christ. And it was, it was on a Friday night, and I can tell you, I, I can name just about every detail that you want to know about that night in 2003. I can tell you that I, I knelt down on a floor inside of a barn, and I want you to make sure that you grab a hold of that, because it wasn't in a church. It wasn't in a building like this. I can tell you, I can tell you lots of things, but the most important thing that I can tell you is, is that I can't tell you the words that I spoke that night. I can't tell you the prayer that I prayed. I can't, I can't tell you how a lot of that moment folded out. But I can tell you that up until that moment, the, the 23 years before me kneeling down, I can tell you that I, that I lived that life according to what I thought was right and what pleased me. But I can tell you from when I got up from that floor, right, my life has not been the same. It's not even been close to being the same. It's a, it's a night that I will never forget. It's the night that I surrendered my life to Christ, that I gave it to Him. And I assure you, in that moment, I didn't understand exactly of what all that meant. But what I can tell you is, is that there was like a, a huge load being lifted off of me. I can tell you, it's almost as, as, the, as the psalmist says in Psalms 103, he says, As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. 
in that moment, everything, right, that, that I had done, right, that, that God just took every bit of it by me surrendering my life and He removed it. He removed it, it says, as far as the east is from the west. Because we can, we can go east and we can, and we can keep going east, right, and we'll never go another direction. Right? It's, it's never ending. If, if two people start out right now and one goes east from right here at Bethlehem and the other goes west, they will never run into each other. Ever. And they can, they can go completely out into space and they will still never see one another. They'll be, se they'll be separated by billions of light years if you want to. That's what God does with our sin when we confess it to Him and He removes it. It's no longer there. And I, I don't know if that doesn't, that should just get you a little bit excited this morning. That should let you know that, that He loves you enough not to hold that over your head. Right? No longer guilt and shame do you have to, do you have to just keep in front of you. God removes it. God offers to do that very thing. But it doesn't stop there. Because Jesus is God's offer. Jesus is the greatest deal that's ever come up. He offers us forgiveness and, and He removes our sin. God gave all of these ceremonies, right? He gave all of these rituals. He gave all of these things right here in the book of Leviticus, right? All of these taking place as the day of atonement for the sin of the people that lived during this time. But God gave us this day as well. He gave us this day to point us towards the greatest day, towards the, the final sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice, Jesus on the cross, right? Uh, and, and He did so that it could truly teach us the meaning of this great sacrifice. And I love, I love how the book of Hebrews describes it, right? On how Jesus' death on the cross, how it supersedes, right? How it trumps, how it outweighs the day of atonement, right? I love that we, we see here in the book of Leviticus, they're offering these pure animals, right? They're sacrificing them, they're shedding their blood, but Jesus offers His own pure blood, he offers it on the cross, Hebrews 9, 12. He entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by the means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. Do, do you understand how, how wonderful that is? That, that priests entered an earthly tent, right? They, they, they came into this man-made building, but Jesus, he offers himself. He offers himself as this sacrifice, this sacrifice in the presence of his God, the one true God. The priests, they, they offer a sacrifice on their own behalf, right, for their own sins. Jesus had no sin. None whatsoever. He was perfect. He was the perfect sacrifice. You see, the priests, they had to do this over and over and over, right? They had to sacrifice repeatedly. Jesus offered Himself one time, one time, and it's going to be good enough for all of eternity. Not just for, not just for a some, not just for those who walked alongside the earth, not just for those who we think necessarily, uh, should receive it, but for all of mankind, for all the truths to trust in Him. And I know, I know it's, it's an overwhelming statement, right? Because Jesus, uh, through God, He offers us this forgiveness. This is ultimately the greatest teaching that's coming out of the New Testament. It's the greatest thing that we read about. It is the gospel, church. It's the greatest news that's ever been told. Jesus dying in the place of sinners. You, me, all of mankind. He died in their place taking our sin on Himself. And then God poured out His wrath against that sin. God poured out His wrath on, on Jesus I love 2 Corinthians 5.21. It says, For our sake He made Himself to be sin who knew no sin, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. So that we might become. God sent His Son, Jesus, to be the scapegoat to take all of our sin upon Himself. 
First Peter says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. That's what we're going to be celebrating here in just a few weeks. That even though that he, he became the scapegoat, is that he didn't stay dead, that he rose again. And now he's sitting at the right hand of God, interceding on our behalf. 1 John 4, 10 says, Is this in this love, not that we have loved God, but He has loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins? And I know, right? I know that's a big word and don't, don't think too highly of me, right? I had to practice that a lot this morning. I want us to get a hold of a couple of those verses. I want us to see how, how wonderful it is. It's worth shouting about. It's worth rejoicing this morning. It's worth singing about. It's worth celebrating about even in the midst of everything that's going on around. It's worth living your life for Him today and forevermore. Praise the Lord that, that you, God, that, that you expressed your perfect wrath, your perfect love on the cross so that we can be free from sin and we can be reconciled back to you. Jesus is the greatest gift. He is the greatest atonement. And you should be shouting right now. You should be, you should be thanking God for the gift that He's given you through His Son. I know, I know it brings us to this point, right? It brings us to this point that when my heart was just breaking as just looking back over it. Because there's people who have not experienced this. They've not experienced what God can do for them through Christ. And I'm not selling you a membership here. I'm not selling anything but Christ, right? I'm, I'm offering you a relationship with Him. Because we need to confess. We need to come to Jesus. He's the only way that we can be reconciled. He's the only way that we can be made right with God. Just as this, this part of this ritual, this, this scapegoat right there, there was confession of sin. It was what the priest did, right? We, we, we saw that he took his hands and he placed them on the goat's head. And it says he confessed sin. Right now. There's sin in our life. There has to be a way for us to get rid of that. There has to be a way for us to, to be removed of that sin. To be free from that sin. They had to confess it. And I want you to grab a hold of this this morning. So do you. So do I. We have to confess that sin. And I know, right, I know that is so uncomfortable. I know that that, that makes you squirmy, even in, even in the confines of your home right now. That makes you look around and begin to think, oh my gracious, what would people think if they knew what was going on in my life? If they knew how I acted, if they knew what I said, if they knew what I did, guess what God does? You're not keeping anything from Him. I'm not hiding anything from Him. He knows our very hearts. He knows our thoughts. He knows exactly of what's going on. He knows what we do when no one else is around. What we say, how we act. There's a way for you to get rid of that sin. For you to just let all that go. For you to cast that away. It's the reason why that the, the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, it was for our sin, for all of mankind's sin, for us to be reconciled with God if we simply confess it, if we can say, confess our sin, if we, if we, if we express the need for, for salvation that only God can bring us, that only, that only Jesus can offer us. And I know, I know the world that we're living in, right? I know all around us, and even though we're in the Bible Belt, even though we're in this sheltered community of, of Washington County, Kentucky, right? I know the world that we're living in tells us something so much different, is that you don't have to tell anyone anything. I know that it tells you that you have the right to do whatever that you want, whenever that you want. And I want you to hear me, and I want you to hear me with as much love and compassion that my, my heart can pour out that you are listening and hearing nothing but a lie straight from the pits of hell. And that, that the enemy wants you to keep you separated from everything that God wants to pour out upon you. When you sin, when, when I sin, what do we need to do to be reconciled to God? What can we do to be forgiven? Yes, you can be forgiven. 
We have to tell the Lord that we have sinned. We must, we must express that. We must share that from, from the depths of our soul. Not that we're sorry that we got caught, but we're sorry that we ever did it in the first place. We're sorry that we have sinned. You know, your, your sin, it separates you from God. My sin, it separates me from God. All sin separates, and it doesn't matter how big or small, and I know we don't have time to get into that this morning. I want you to know that all sin separates. But I want you to know there's something that's so, so wonderful here today, even with no one here, right? Even as you're sitting at your home, right? That God loves us enough that He provided a way. He provided a way for our sins to be forgiven, for us to be reconciled back to, to Him. And even greater than that, for them to be removed. For them to be removed, never to, remember, to be remembered again. We must tell Him, right? We must confess to Him that we believe in Him, that Jesus came. He came as the Son of God and He died on a cross. He died on a cross for my sin, for your sin, for our sin. That He rose again on the third day and that today He is alive. And because of Him being alive, that's what saves us. That's what separates us. That's what makes us different. And then we need to ask Him to come into our lives. We need to ask Him to come into our lives, to forgive us our sins, right? To give us a new life. To make us brand new. And guess what? Here's the greatest news. Guess what? He'll do it. It's not on some of the time. It's not part of the time, right? He's done that for me. He's done that for others. He'll do that for whoever calls upon His name. The, the Bible says, You shall be saved. And I know that word saved has gotten, gotten lots of, of negative reaction, right? Especially from things that we see on social media or on, on TV and, and we get, we get that blow completely out of proportion. I want you to know that there's no greater word that could be said. He, he will do that for you right now of where you're sitting at. You don't, you don't have to be here in Bethlehem, right? You don't have to be in any other church. You could do it right now in your own home. That you can just confess those very things. And according to God's word, it says that your prayer, your asking is just as good as, as mine was in that barn over all those years ago. You don't have to go to a temple today. You don't have to have to get some priest to go to God for you on your behalf. You see, in the Old Testament, right, uh, only the priest could go. Only the priest could go into the most holiest place, right? And he could only do that one time a year. Can you imagine longing? We're, we're in this thing for how many weeks right now? And, and we're struggling and being separated and not experiencing the fellowship and the very presence of God. This priest could only go one time a year. On the Day of Atonement. I want you to just grab a hold of that thought process just, just for a moment, right? So when Jesus died on that cross, that veil, it separated, right? It, we know that it was torn, and it was torn from top to bottom. And it separated that most holy place from the holy place. Now it let us know it was a great, it was a great moment for God to allow us to know that all people have access to the very presence of God at any time. At any time, you, you don't have to wait on anything right now. If you've trusted in Christ, he, the Spirit is living on the inside of you and you don't have to have two or three or more to be gathered, right? You can pray in your prayer closet and God will be with you. He, he will be right there in the midst with you. And He'll help you through anything that you're going through. Whether it be financial hardship, whether it be worry or anxiety or cancer or, or brain bleeds or whatever may be going on in your life right now. COVID-19. God can be right in the midst of that. He can carry you through that. I love Hebrews 4, 16. It says, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. We, we can have that confidence. 
Praise be to God. I love and seeing how all of this wonderful thing started out from, from Leviticus as God had just instituted this law, something for, for people to follow, something for people to have to do. But how wonderful is it that we, we don't have to shed any more blood, that we don't have to wait, we don't have to go somewhere else, that we can experience God's grace, His love, His mercy, His forgiveness at any time. I don't, I don't know about you. I, I, I hope that you're as overwhelmed as I am right here in this moment. That we, that you, that all peoples, that we could experience God's presence, not, not merely just one time a year or per, per year, right? But that we could experience it any day of our lives, every day of our lives. And I just, I just pray right there with that, right? I just, want, I just want to come right in that moment because I know there are people right now in this moment that are just completely overwhelmed. That maybe it's the first time that they've, they've ever heard that, that, that their sin can be forgiven. That right here in this moment, that they, they, they've never heard that, that God came for them, that He sent His Son to die on the cross so that they, they could be saved from their sin. That God used His Son as the scapegoat, the ultimate scapegoat, the ultimate sacrifice. That now that, that when, when God looks down at, at His people, those that have trusted Him, that He, he, he doesn't not see them in their sin, right? He sees His Son's blood. Just as, as, as Moses and Aaron would sprinkle the blood on the altar to, to, sacrifice, uh, to, to show that their, their sins had been forgiven, they had been covered, so as, as Jesus' blood splattered upon that cross. Oh man, get a hold of that. Just, just get a hold of that just for a moment. That, that Jesus' blood is what's, it's what's covering you. That when, that when God, does, when He looks down, when he, when he sees you, He sees His Son. He sees His blood. He, the ultimate sacrifice. I just, I just think about how, how that, that hurt His heart. But knowing that that was the only way that a truly pure and loving and holy God that we could be made right was to send a, uh, the only one capable to be that sacrifice. And Lord, I, I just pray, I pray right now for, for people, just uh, all people right now that are, that are hearing this, that, that may be watching this, and whether it's going to be today or if it's down the road or, or some other time, Lord, that, that right now in this moment, that if they've never trusted in you, that they would simply do that. They don't have to have church figured out. They don't have to have uh, everything that I've talked out of, uh, about this morning, Lord. They just need to know enough. They need to know, just as we've already talked about, that if they, they know that you, God, sent your son to die for them on the cross and that he rose again and that now he's sitting in heaven, if they want to surrender their lives uh, to live for you, then, Lord, according to your word, it says that's good enough, that that settles it. So I'm just, I'm just praying for, for all kinds of people, all kinds of people that maybe are, are, are praying that very thing right now. And if you are, then I, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to share that with someone, whether it's someone inside of your home or if you want to reach out to us here, then, then, then we want to know. But I don't want you to keep this thing in. I, I think about in, in Leviticus and I think about as, as the people watched that priest and I, 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 I think about that moment when that priest laid his hands on, their head, on that goat's head and then he sent him outside the camp. I can imagine those people just thinking, praise God, my sin is gone. I can just see that image. I can see that goat just walking out in the distance and I can imagine people just watching it until they couldn't see it anymore and then the relief coming upon them. Knowing that their, their sin was there no more. And I want you to know that that very thing, thing can just play out inside of your heart right now. That you can just cast it upon the Lord and it will be gone. That no longer will you have to carry that guilt or burden or shame or, or anything else that may be weighing you down. That God can forgive you. He will forgive you. And that He loves you enough in this moment for that very thing to play out. So I just, I just pray. 
I just pray whether whether you've never done that or or whether you just need a time of recommitment that God is offering something great here in this moment. He's offering a relationship with Him through His Son. And there's all kinds of other ways that people think that, that they can experience that, but there's only one way, and that's through Christ. So I just, I just pray, I just pray that, that you will respond obediently, that, that from this moment that you will live a life that's honoring and pleasing to God. And the only way that you can do that is that if you accept His Son, that you accept this, this great offer. And I know, I know that it's very easy for us to say in this moment, well, well, I'll, I'll do that later on, but none of us are promised another day, another second, another hour, another week. Do not hesitate another second. Let today be the day. Let now be the time that you surrender your life to Him. And I encourage you to be obedient. If you, if you, if you need to talk to someone, if you want to talk to someone, then please reach out. We'll, we'll be more than glad. If you, if you don't have a Bible, we'd love to give you a Bible where you can read these very things for yourself. But Lord, I just pray, I just pray right now in, in just complete celebration, especially as we're coming up on one of the greatest times that we celebrate as believers in you is, is, is Resurrection Sunday, is Easter Sunday. Let this day of atonement, let that be something that just fuels our passion, our desire, our love for you, knowing that we don't have to operate in this way, that we've got you. Let that drive our excitement and our encouragement for other people to experience this very thing that we've experienced. So Lord, I just, I just pray all this very thing. I just pray it all in your precious son's name. Amen. Church, I just want to, I want to just thank you again for our time. And I just want to thank you for everything that, that God is doing in and through you. And I can't stress enough, right, that if there's something that you need, you please, you reach out to us, right, that you get a hold of us, that we want to help the best way that we possibly can. We'll be here today until one o'clock, right? We'll be hanging out. So if you want to come by, then we encourage you to do that as well. And we'll also let you know about services tonight and what the plan is there. But just praying you guys have a blessed rest of your day. Thanks.